Hi, everyone. Um, this talk is uh, just a lightning one. I um, just wanted to share uh, something that's uh, already built in uh, in Ruby in the standard libraries. Uh, I myself don't really uh, skim through the standard libraries that often. So um, the search of uh, my current problem, it was really a Interesting thing that I, I found it found a solution uh, in the standard libraries. Um, so, do I have my slides here? Yeah. Or how to move it? <laughs> well, uh, okay. <laughs> There's not too much. Left and right. Okay. So yeah, I just uh, a standard introduction. Um, Victor Bad, um, a Ruby engineer uh, at Multicom. Multicom is uh, basically just a very young startup. We are online for one month now. And basically what we do <coughs> is, uh, is doing, uh, and giving, giving you a web application that you can design your own decals. And so what's a decal, you might ask, are huge stickers that you can put on your bikes, for instance. But not just your motorbikes, but cars, power boats, whatever. Whatever uh, you can do uh, competition with, so like jet skis or yeah quads, and so um, we are giving you a web application that you can design your uh, decals with, and we have uh, a huge database uh, about competitions. So our app will help you design. Uh, uh, the decals for you, let's say, let's stick with the motorbikes. Um, have, to have you design the, uh, the decals for the next competition you are going to attend. And uh, those data uh, uh, consist of uh, many data sources, files, access sheets, uh, images, um, online sources, and so our database gets Insanely huge that takes 24 hours at least to see. So it's like when I was hired, uh, my first task was okay, Victor, uh, here, here's a little script, bring it down to like eight hours or, or less. Okay, I just uh, skimmed through it and so uh, insane stuff going on. Um, so what I got uh, to know is uh, <laughs> that why is it so slow? Yeah, uh, and I'm going to speak more about the red highlighted uh, issue there. It's using just a single thread, a single process. It's just extremely procedural. And there are a lot of uh, image processing, which uh, uh, sky high. Bring, brings the memory usage, usage of the script sky high, at least uh, eight gigabytes uh, per C load. Um, <coughs> there are variety of uh, data sources, as I mentioned, that we are using CSV files, uh, Excel sheets, uh, CSV files converted from Excel, Excel sheets, or whatever, <laughs> SVG, BMP, whatever uh, image sources you can think of. Um, and I think uh, down in the script there are uh, unoptimized uh, data associations like uh, let's say you, you are uh, digging through the, the images, then the countries, then you go back to the images, then you uh, skip uh, two paces ahead and back and forth and you're still loading images and you are not finished whereas you should first 
uh, process the images, then the phones, then go to the other model that use that uses these common uh, assets and so uh, horrible things. Yeah, uh, so yeah, the dark common uh, data sources are uh, too spread out just because of this. And this whole thing is uh, a product of uh, legacy that data design because uh, as, as I learned, our uh, software development uh, was uh, outsourced uh, in the first few years, then Bob decided to bring it uh, in-house and that's why he hired me as well. <laughs> so, uh, why, so how, how to uh, solve a single process thingy? Um, the CTO told me about uh, the constraints I must endure. So they don't want to change the infrastructure. So there is one uh, process, one script to process it, stay within that bound. So no multiple processings uh, are going to spawn or no, you know, they, they won't start up new servers. I have to stay within the eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, and so on and so forth. So, no more databases, no more, no more nothing. Just use the current infrastructure. Um, so I was thinking about okay, no, uh, no changing from MRI. So no real thread. Okay, forks. Maybe some some API stuff uh, like. Uh, if I could just rewrite the script uh, or uh, refactor it to, you, to put the common stuff uh, at, the, at the front of the load so I could gather them all together, maybe load them into some, some uh, cache or whatever, you know, to, or use some tables to, to gather them uh, later on and then process the, the other models that, that Uses them. Um, okay, it's, it's maybe some API thing I was searching for, and uh, while I was searching, uh, browsing the web for this, this API uh, subject, I came across uh, distributed uh, um, word distributed. So, and I was searching Ruby. So, distributed Ruby just gave me. Uh, the Ruby that was actually uh, written in, uh, I think, in 1999 by Masatoshi Seki, and he's a core uh, Ruby committer um, above all else. And uh, well, he's he's highly known in Japan. He also wrote. Uh, his own book about distributed uh, programming in Ruby, uh, about his jam actually. Uh, that was later on, I think in one or two years time, uh, it was brought into the standard library. Uh, and at first it only had like 160 lines of code and now they have over 7,000 over the years. So uh, I think it's, it's being there uh, from the first time you you match Ruby yourself, so it's it's easy to uh, to look at the code. Um, what else would I mention here? Um, so yeah, um, most of the most of the code that uh, that introduces you to uh, to distributed Ruby is like uh, they spawn up uh, two or three terminals. And uh, on one terminal, this is the this is the, the general uh, chat client effect that you have uh, a sender, a receiver, or even two send two sender receiver servers, and they can communicate back and forth stuff, uh, mostly messages. But <coughs> uh, I went further, and I I also uh, wrote the the book. Uh, about this uh, DUB and they, they uh, show that 
Theobi is, is uh, more than just a chat server, like you can get it from uh, Node.js and, and all these uh, libraries, like Socket.io or whatever. But apart from that, it's capable of uh, uh, communicating in Ruby to Ruby. Like what, what you have to understand here is uh, you are using plain Ruby. This is not a CS sanction. This can be used on MRI, uh, uh, GRuby, or uh, or even Rubinius or whatever, because it's it's just a plain Ruby stuff. It uses a single simple uh, TCP uh, server architecture. Uh, so they, there are two or or many TCP servers uh, communicating with each other. But uh, the thing uh, that caught my eyes was that I can talk, I, I can call uh, uh, methods on each server and get back native uh, Ruby objects that actually can, could be marshaled, because that's, that's a constraint. If it cannot be marshaled, then it, it, it cannot travel the line and be reconstructed at the other hand, because we are still take, talking about uh, TCP servers. And this is, this is my very uh, stripped down uh, first program that actually, uh, actually works. Um, and so my, my, one of my constraints is that I had to work in one script. So I couldn't spawn up two terminals and then play like that because that wouldn't uh, bring me closer to my goal. So I run in, into many problems there. My extended uh, scripts, uh, so the, the, the holder the, uh, script, the scripts uh, link is uh, going to be in the slides that I'm going to share. Um, so first, we, we are playing with forks because then I then we can we can leverage the the uh, real CPU cores. So I can I can like uh, here I'm going to spawn uh, three uh, other forks, leaving the the other one uh, with the server uh, process. So on four core CPU is is kind of effective. Um, this is going to serve me the data, which is actually going to be like the server. And these are the little clients that are going to pop from the, uh, the global array. And it's actually global because uh, they are going to chew it up. So it's like the first that spawn is going to pop uh, one, the next is two, three, and whoever gets to four, uh, they are going to uh, end up empty. So that's what I'm searching for. It's, it's like uh, I'm going to build up the common data in the server that's accessible to whatever clients I'm going to spawn after. And so it's like a, a mini database, but still, in, still managed in one uh, script. Yeah, so that was that was my main idea, and, and uh, to manage the, the threads and processes, are a way to uh, scan to to show it uh, here on the slide. So I I just I just gave it to you that to uh, see it for yourself, and and you can you can try the scripts as well. Um, for me, it was it was enough uh, to use it uh, as a as a data store and to, to communicate uh, data within uh, within one speed bot uh, throughout to other processes, other forks. For others, <coughs> it could bring uh, bring uh, different Ruby versions on different platforms together. So it, it's been around since the since or since before the, the 
1.8 uh, Ruby version. Um, so you can do something like if you're running a 1.8 uh, MRI on Linux, uh, a GUV on Windows, um, and they can they can share data uh, uh, between each other. So Windows can send to Linux and back and forth, or um, yeah, you get the picture. Um, Twitter used it uh, to build some message queues before they changed to something like Rabbit. Uh, how do you call that? Rabbit? What, what's it? Rabbit and queue, yes. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, they, they used it. They, they told it was, it was uh, good, performant, but a bit flaky. So, yeah, it was, it was a, a cup of tea for the long run. Um, and uh, I mentioned that slide uh, in the in the link section, so you can you can check it out. Um, and they are also uh, mentioning that if you want to do some sim simple scripting, uh, plain GUV be is enough. But um, but then if you have you you want to do something more like like tens. Like hundreds or thousands of, of clients talking together, uh, there is a, a, a jam so called window that uh, I think it's up to you to, to uh, figure, it, figure out how you can use it. But generally, that's that's uh, a higher uh, scalability uh, solution uh, for ones who, who want to use this distributed stuff. Uh, for me, it was it was not interesting enough, so I'm I'm just sticking to my my main goal, and I don't want to overload my my brain with <laughs> nonsense stuff for me. Um, so yeah, I'm just leveraging a input core processing in MRI, um, but I can think about other Ruby web servers to talk each other, and they could, as I mentioned before, they are going back and forth. Ruby objects, so it's like uh, native Ruby hashes or, or arrays or, or even active record uh, models or whatever. Um, I think, um, yeah, in the links, I also mentioned the, the biggest Japanese uh, monolith that is. Rails monolith actually, uh, they get they got a um, really huge uh, R spec uh, hive containing over twenty thousand specs, and they are running that twenty thousand specs in less than ten seconds, ten, ten minutes, on a very uh, very big uh, cloud instance, and they use hundred. Spread out uh, and, and use instead a few couple of uh, CPU cores for running the specs. It's still very impressive. So it's like they don't they don't have to wait too long to run the whole spec through. And there's there's also a, a few links in the link section. Um, uh, I, I really do highly recommend. Also watching this this monolith video uh, about Cookpad because they mentioned uh, really good jams in it. They don't truly really mention how they managed to uh, run these specs. I just got it from another video as a hint that they are using it. The Ruby. Um, there's another video, uh, really fascinating one, that uh, that proves the the uh, inter-platform communication. Uh, a guy uh, runs uh, an MRI using PK as a canvas and uh, prints on it using uh, Roboto on an Android phone by just touching the screen and uh, draw, uh, drawing circles uh, on the PK canvas on the other machine. That's fascinating. So, uh, 
So yeah, I, I picked up the scaling Twitter slides. Uh, here's my uh, script and, and what I have found out about uh, processes when you are not using uh, multiple scripts, but you are going to end up with uh, uh, almost uh, um, yeah, still running bots, but finished processes and how to tag them. Um, yeah, and I recommend it, this book. The book is genius. It's, it's not too old. I mean, the book, it, the book itself is old, but it's it's uh, freshly translated with the uh, help of the, the author itself, himself. Oh, so it's it's um, very capable. Yeah. So thanks. Any questions? But I don't know if I can answer them. <laughs> what time did you get your script bounded? Pardon? What time did you get your 24 hour script bounded? Uh, well, I could get one of the reporting parts uh, down from 2 hours to 30 minutes. Uh, but that's just because I can run uh, 3 MySQL queries uh, next to each other. But that, that was the first part. That was what fired me up to, okay, let's rewrite. Uh, really refactor this code because it's it's capable. It could, it could be doable. Yes. <laughs> How many folks did you have in the server you were running your script? Uh, it, it's only run on my machine, just four cores, mainly. I use I use three. I stick to three because the the other one is needed for my SQL and all the other other processes. I don't want to. Yeah, I, and, and yeah, the CPU told me that I can use only three cores. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really constrained. But I, I take the challenge. Yeah. Thank you, then. <laughs>